cause them. Well, let's go to my colleague Karen Giannoni, who's been following the developments in Pretoria. Thank you very much. Well, today uh, we saw the first defence witness take the stand. That was a pathologist for the defence, but after three hours of intense cross-examination, the court was finished with him, and very suddenly Oscar Pistorius himself stood up and took the stand as defence witness number two. Before he was asked any questions, he asked for permission to say something to those listening in the court. It was, he said, a heartfelt and very... Uh, uh, heartbroken apology to Riva Steenkamp's family, the family of the girlfriend he shot dead on Valentine's Day last year. Um, since, since this tragedy happened and I haven't thought about uh, your family, I wake up every morning and you're the first people I think of, the first people I pray for. I can't imagine the, the pain and the sorrow and the emptiness that I've caused you and your family. Uh, I was simply trying to protect Riva. I can promise that when she went to bed that night, she felt loved. I've tried to put my words on paper many, many times to write to you, but no words would ever suffice. And all through that, Reva Steenkamp's mother, June, sat there, her face impassive, no hint of what she was thinking inside, but she stared at Oscar Pistorius intently. He carried on in that vein. His, his voice sounded very, very cracked. He sounded like he was struggling to talk. He, he was crying visibly through much of that, according to people in court. But, of course, we couldn't see Oscar Pistorius. The video live from his testimony not shown, only the audio, only the view of what was going on in court around him uh, visible for us to see. But he carried on and talked about how he had been since that terrible day in 2013. And he discussed his mental state when asked by Defence Counsel Barry Rue how he had been feeling, what medication he'd been on. He said he was being tormented by nightmare after nightmare about what happened that night. Uh, I, have, I have terrible nightmares about, about things that happened that night where I wake up and I smell, I can smell, um, I can smell uh, blood and I wake up to being terrified. Um, <laughs> if I hear a noise, I wake up. Uh, just in a, in, a, in a complete state of terror, um, to a point that I'd rather not sleep than, um, than fall asleep and, and wake up like that. So for, for many weeks I, I didn't sleep. When I, um, in uh, March, April last year, I'd lost a significant amount of weight and um, from my care of my family. Um, I sought medical advice to um, to to start um, medication for for sleeping. <laughs> Well, after we heard that very emotional Oscar Pistorius, he was somewhat more composed when he was asked questions about his early childhood. He talked about his disability, which led to the amputation of his lower legs and his uh, replacement prosthetics, how he'd learned to walk on them, and eventually how it came to be that he competed in both able-bodied and Paralympic competitions. We, talked, we heard him talk about his mother, his family, and his fear of crime, all building into the defence's picture of a vulnerable, disabled Oscar Pistorius, who had a, a paranoia, almost, of some crimes happening to him. He'd had experience of crime in the past. So uh, the court has adjourned for the day. It adjourned early because he said he was exhausted. The judge granted that adjournment. It will resume at 9.30 again local time. We'll hear more from Oscar Pistorius. Okay, Karen, thanks very much. A very dramatic and emotional day there in court. Uh, Karen Giannoni there in